I'm a big fan of magnesium because magnesium and calcium counter each other inside the cell. So calcium and sodium outside, magnesium and potassium inside the cell and inside the mitochondria. And they're the ones that kind of create that gradient. And anytime you have a muscle contraction, a nerve conduction, those quickly switch and the, the body recreates that homeostasis. So if you have optimal magnesium, and we know research shows in animal models that magnesium levels go down very quickly yeah. after yeah. a TBI. And so what we can do is optimize those magnesium levels. I think that's a really good way of offsetting that calcium um, hyper um, excitotoxic phase. Um, so that's the first piece. It takes probably, uh, I would say, you know, three months to really get magnesium into your cell fully. A majority of the magnesium is stored inside your bones, and that's the place that is the storage tank gets depleted first. So if you are in a state of <clears throat> high exertion like an athlete, research shows that 90% of athletes are deficient in magnesium. Uh, Any time that you are going to have any sort of medications that block stomach acid, you're going to be deficient in magnesium. So those are like things like Tums, proton mm -hmm. pump inhibitors. If you're eating highly refined diets that kind of have this negating effect on our digestive juices, they are going to also inhibit the absorption of magnesium. So that's pretty much everyone in North America. Right. So everyone is walking around with a subclinical deficiency in magnesium. And the reason you don't see it on blood work is that only 1% of it is in your blood work where 99% of it is in bone, muscle, tissue, and brain, including that. So I'm a big fan of getting magnesium because it also has a lot of other beneficial effects on like lowering inflammation. There's research on it itself lowering CRP levels. Just so why are so many people deficient in magnesium? Like why is that such a common deficiency? <clears throat> like isn't that something that you know, would be readily available in just standard diet? Is it because of the processed yeah. foods? Is, or is it, um, I think we've, we've spoken about this before, about like farming practices and things like yep. that. So like maybe kind of elaborate on that a little bit and why it's so commonly deficient in athletes. It's a great question and I lecture on this all the time. And I alluded to a couple points, you know, a couple minutes ago. The main reason is that we don't have it in our agricultural practices from a fertilizer perspective anymore. So majority of the fertilizer is nitrogen based and the reason is is that makes things grow really fast. But what magnesium does in the plant, and by the way it's not found in the animal kingdom, it's found primarily in the plant kingdom, uh, where iron is kind of the center of that hemoglobin molecule mm -hmm. that animal mammals need to use. Plants, the chlorophyll molecule, which gives it a nice green color, magnesium is the center of that. Uh, so you find it in plants, but the problem is is that what its job really is on a plant is that it kind of makes things grow strong. And you know, agricultural practices don't really care about strong, they care about fast so we can harvest high it yield. quick, high yield, exactly. Get it out there. Uh, so I think there's a depletion in our, our, our food sources. And the foods that are richer in magnesium are gonna be typically uh, things like your greens, pumpkin seeds are, are high in magnesium, so I recommend that a lot to patients. And, and that has a lot of other medicinal benefits too from a fiber perspective. Uh, and, a, and a molecules that are called uh, cytosterols. Uh, and some of the things like tofu also has, um, has magnesium in it. But even these don't have enough magnesium yeah. to be therapeutic. So I think magnesium is one of those things, kind of like vitamin D and like vitamin C, is, is a real prerequisite for us if in this kind of high stress uh, <laughs> culture that we live that we should be taking regularly. Uh, and as, then, as more of a supplement. As a supplement, yeah, services. as a supplement. Uh, and taking an amino acid form of magnesium, which means just magnesium is attached to a molecule. Uh, primarily, if you find it in the pharmacy, you're going to find in the laxative aisle, yeah. and, you know, magnesium oxide. That is not the therapeutic type of magnesium. If you need to go to the bathroom, fine. But I like to use one that's attached to an amino acid, like glycine or malic acid or citrate's not an amino acid but that's not a bad form either so like magnesium glycinate would be up there magnesium citrate um, better more absorbable form so they 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 don't have that laxative effect and they have a, a an additional therapeutic effect because now the glycine also is in a relaxing amino acid yeah so you have like this a lot of my patients say i sleep better when i take magnesium i take acid. two before bed every night <laughs> yeah since uh since visiting you yeah and and that's a and that's a very simple inexpensive way that you can kind of um be affecting things that are more to this tbi you mm -hmm. know just beneficial things and then finally I, i'd say 
I think it really comes down to our digestive systems are constantly under attack and we'll probably talk about this when we talk about the gut brain yeah, uh, yeah. access well, I yeah, won't yeah. get into it in a lot of detail but I really think the absorption of magnesium from our foods is not um, not very good and that has to do with the fact that not only is it not in the foods also a lot of our uh, um, inflamed we know research shows that people that have Crohn's colitis um, you could probably argue on food sensitivities anytime there's a permeability issue, inflammation at the level of the gut, so food allergies, that's going to be, um, that's going to be a, a consideration that decreases magnesium absorption. We've got a question from somebody here that just came in, uh, dosage. What would the recommended dosage be uh, for magnesium? I, I know the answer, but I'm let you, yeah. let you field this one. Yeah, I think that it, the, the important question comes down to make sure, making sure that you have the right form. And so assuming that you have the right form which we talked about which is an amino acid form like glycinate or malate you really want to um, you really want to be getting around two to four hundred milligrams a day of that type of magnesium and I usually divide the doses so I don't like to yeah, yeah, I don't. I, I'd like to actually split it apart because if you take all your magnesium at once, you maybe only absorb thirty mm -hmm. percent of that magnesium. So I'd rather you take, you know, one capsule three times a day is better absorbed than taking three capsules all at once. Ah, okay. Yeah. So there's a diminishing returns the higher yeah, you yeah. go. Same goes for vitamin C, uh, because that's another one of those that is kind of capped out at around twenty thirty percent absorption in the gut. So two to four hundred milligrams spread out throughout the day. Yeah, so like to go. two capsules in the morning, two capsules in the evening of a uh, 100 milligram per capsule. Right. And that's about the maximum amount of magnesium glycinate that is pure magnesium glycinate. Yeah. A lot of my patients are taking magnesium, but they're taking these magnesium glycinates that are actually adulterated with magnesium yeah. oxide. Yeah, so I was doing this. I was a victim of this. So yeah. I went to health food store. You said get magnesium glycinate and I got it and I think it was like 200 milligrams per cap. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm taking, you know, I'm taking 400 milligrams of this stuff and whatever. And you were like, how many are in each cap? And when I told you, you were like, no, that's impossible. The most you yeah. can get into a cap is like 90 to 100 milligrams. Right. And so um, basically what they do is they advertise it as magnesium glycinate, but a lot of it is magnesium oxide that's mixed in there as a smaller molecule that allows you to get more in there for space, right? Is yeah, that, is that yeah right? it's exactly the case. Yeah. It, it's more of like a, a, a bit of a marketing technique. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a, a, a trickery where it, it says magnesium on the bottle, so you assume it's magnesium glycinate, but when you read the fine print, sometimes it's not even there. Yeah. And you know a lot of companies are scrambling the last year to kind of update their label because you know what really bothered me as a clinician is that there was a lack of transparency that yeah. they weren't claiming that it was magnesium, pure magnesium glycinate. So I usually like, to, you know, I, I want my patients to get what's going to be most beneficial and I don't like when they have the world pulled over their eyes. Yeah, yeah.